Hi everyone! Let's go over the direct and indirect pathways of the basal ganglia. The basal ganglia is composed of multiple structures in the brain that are involved in regulating voluntary movement. Throughout the day, the basal ganglia processes motor commands coming from your motor cortex and modifies the commands accordingly. It promotes the voluntary movements that you intend to make and simultaneously suppresses unwanted movements. There are several primary structures of the basal ganglia that are involved in these pathways. Here I have already drawn a coronal section of the brain. The gray outline of the brain is the cerebral cortex. This light blue dot on the top is the caudate nucleus. And the same colored wedge below it is the putamen. These two structures can be collectively called the striatum. The green wedge close by is the globus pallidus, which can be further broken down into external globus pallidus, commonly abbreviated as GPE, and internal globus pallidus, GPI. Near the bottom, we have the subthalamic nucleus, represented by the yellow blob, and substantia nigra, represented by the magenta region. The thalamus is another important structure in these two pathways, but it is not part of the basal ganglia. I have zoomed into one side of the brain and slightly rearranged the locations of these structures so that it is easier to visualize the pathways. First, let's look at what the two pathways have in common. The cortex is going to excite the striatum in both instances, and the internal globus pallidus always inhibits the thalamus from sending excitatory impulses back to the cerebral cortex. Excitation of the cerebral cortex promotes movement. Now let's see how the direct and indirect pathways differ. In the direct pathway, the cortex excites the striatum, which causes the striatum to send inhibitory impulses directly to the internal globus pallidus. From there, the GPI inhibits the thalamus from exciting the cortex. To see more clearly what effect this has on movement, we can draw out the arrows by themselves like so. The cortex stimulates this inhibition of the striatum on the GPI, which inhibits the GPI's inhibition on the thalamus. Or you can remember that two negatives make a positive. As the GPI is always inhibitory, Inhibiting an inhibitor is essentially doing the opposite. So you can think of this as the striatum stimulating the thalamus to excite the cortex. Therefore, this pathway promotes movement. In the indirect pathway, the excitatory signals from the cortex cause the striatum to inhibit the external globus pallidus. The GPE has inhibitory projections to the subthalamic nucleus, which then promotes the GPI's inhibition of the thalamus. When drawn out, you can see that the inhibition of the GPE actually works to promote the excitation of the GPI by the subthalamic nucleus. This then promotes the GPI's inhibition on the thalamus. Together, this pathway suppresses movement. In addition to this, there is also dopamine that is released from the substantia nigra, which works to both promote the direct pathway and inhibit the indirect pathway through projections to the striatum. As a result, dopamine stimulates movement overall. Let's look at these two pathways side by side. For the direct pathway, the motor cortex stimulates the striatum. The striatum then sends inhibitory impulses directly to the internal globus pallidus, which usually inhibits the thalamus. This increases the excitatory impulses sent back to the cortex by the thalamus. Meanwhile, dopamine released from the substantia nigra can also excite the direct pathway. For the indirect pathway, the motor cortex stimulates the striatum as well. However, this time, 
the striatum sends inhibitory impulses to the external globus pallidus, which normally inhibits the subthalamic nucleus. This allows less inhibition of the excitatory impulses sent from the subthalamic nucleus to the internal globus pallidus, which in turn promotes the inhibition of the thalamus. This decreases the excitatory impulses sent back to the cortex by the thalamus. Dopamine released from the substantia nigra can inhibit the indirect pathway to promote movement. If you focus on areas of the pathways that differ from one another, you can see how the direct pathway turns off the inhibition that the internal globus pallidus normally has on the thalamus. On the other hand, the projections of the indirect pathway further stimulates the GPI's inhibition of the thalamus. Because of this, the direct pathway promotes voluntary movement, and the indirect pathway prevents unwanted movements from occurring.